So if we know the number of moles of solute in a solution and the liters in a solution, we can divide them and figure out the molarity of that solution. In this video, we're going to learn to do something a little bit different with molarity. We're going to learn how to use molarity as a conversion factor to go between liters in a solution and moles in a solution. So here is our first problem. And it asks, how many moles of NaCl, sodium chloride, are in 3.5 liters of a 1.5 molar solution of sodium chloride. So we've got 3.5 liters of the solution, and we want to convert this into moles. We're going to need to use the molarity 1.5 molar as a conversion factor. This can be really confusing, because 1.5 molar, it doesn't look much like a conversion factor. There's not a top and a bottom. And second of all, the units that we need, moles and liters, are nowhere to be found here. So how do we use this number as a conversion factor? Well, here's how. We got to take this m here and expand it. We kind of got to unpack it. Remember what I always say with molar concentrations, and that's that something like 1.5 molar really means that there are 1.5 moles for every one liter of solution. And check it out. We take this M, we expand it, we unpack it, and we get something that we can use as a conversion factor. So now pull this down here, and I can multiply through because I've got liters up here and liters down there, and my final answer now will be in moles. So I do 3.5 times 1.5, and the answer is 5.3, rounding to two significant figures, moles of, uh, of NaCl here. So this is pretty straightforward. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is that when you're given a molar concentration, you've got to expand it, you've got to unpack it so that you can turn it into a conversion factor. Here's the next one. If you have 4.1 moles of glucose and want to make a 0.25 molar solution with it, what will be the final volume of the solution? So here we're starting with 4.1 moles and we want to use molarity to go to liters. We'll take the molarity of the solution, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 molar. Okay, as we did before, we got to turn this into a conversion factor by unpacking it. Okay, so what this means is that there are 0 0.25 moles per one liter. Pull this down, is this going to work as a conversion factor? No, it's not, because I have moles up here and then also moles up here. So they're not going to cancel out, right? I need moles down here. Okay, so what I can do is I can take this conversion factor and flip it. And now I can have one liter on the top and 0 0.25 moles on the bottom. It's the same thing as this, it's just flipped around. And now when I pull this down here and I multiply, I'm all set because I got moles up here, moles down here they cancel out. I'm left with liters, which is what I'm looking for because I'm looking for a volume. So the math here is going to be 4.1 times 1 divided by 0 0.25, which is going to give me, rounded to two significant figures, it's going to give me 16 liters. So all I had to do here was take the molar concentration, unpack it to get moles over liters, but then since that didn't work, I had to flip the conversion factor. You'll always have to unpack molarity. You may or may not have to flip the conversion factor to make it work. Now we're going to do some problems where you have to do a few more steps with some additional unit conversions. If a student has 35.0 grams of FeCl3, that's iron chloride, and needs to make a 1.5 molar solution with it, what will the volume of the solution be? Okay, so in this problem, we're looking for volume, so volume is going to be in liters. Molarity lets us convert between moles and liters, but check this out. The amount of iron chloride here isn't given in moles, it's given in grams. So before we can use molarity as a conversion factor to get liters, first we've got to take 35.0 grams and we've got to convert it to moles. How are we going to do that? We're going to do that by using the molar mass. So iron chloride is made of iron and three chlorines, so I do the molar mass of iron plus three times the molar mass of chlorine, and I get 
this number here, okay? Is this going to work as a conversion factor, grams over moles? No, it's not, because I got grams, grams there. So what I'm going to have to do is rewrite it as one mole divided by 162.20 grams. It's the same thing, just flipped. And now I can pull this up here, grams up, grams down. They cancel out, and I have moles here. And I can multiply through and get 0 0.216, three significant figures, moles. OK, so now I know how many moles of iron chloride I have. So now I can go on to the next step where I'm going to use 0 0.216 moles and multiply that by molarity so that I can go from moles to liters, like right up here. OK, now for the molarity, I've got to take what I start with, uh, 1.5 molar, and I've got to write that as a conversion factor. So I can write that as 1.5. 5 moles divided by 1 liter. That's one way I can write it. Pull it up here, it's not going to work. Moles, moles there. Okay? So I can flip it and I'll get 1 liter divided by 1.5 moles. And now I can move this up here for molarity and it'll work. So I can cancel moles and moles left with liters and I get 0 0.14. That's rounded to two significant figures here. 0 0.14 liters. Okay, now this could be the final answer here, 0 0.14. But the thing about this is it's smaller than one liter. So it would be really nice to be able to write this as milliliters. Milliliters is a better unit to report small volumes in. Okay, so I can do one more step here and I'll do 0 0.14 liters. And I'll find a conversion factor that I can use for this, okay? 1,000 milliliters in one liter, and so one of these is going to be good. It's either going to be this one or this one. Liters on top, liters on the bottom here. So I'll just pull this conversion factor out, multiply by this, and now I have liters up here, liters down there, left with milliliters. All I'm going to do is 0 0.14 times 1,000, and that's going to give me 140 milliliters. And that's a, a better looking final answer. So there's nothing wrong with 0.14 liters. It's just kind of neater if you put it in milliliters. Let's do one more of these. How many grams of NaOH, sodium hydroxide, do you have to dissolve to make 725 milliliters of a 2.5 molar solution? Okay, what are we starting with? What are we looking for? We're looking for grams, okay? Grams isn't one of the things we can get with molarity, but we can get moles, and then we can go to grams from there. What we can plug into molarity is liters. That's the volume. Now, the volume here isn't given to us in liters, but it is given to us in milliliters. It's relatively easy to turn this into liters, then we can use molarity to get moles, and then finally, we'll convert from moles to grams. So th those are the three steps that we'll use here. We'll start by taking 725 milliliters, and turning that into liters. There are 1,000 milliliters in one liter, so we can use one of these conversion factors. Multiply it by this one. These cancel out. Left with liters. Since there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter, all I'm doing here is dividing this by 1,000 to get 0 0.725, uh, not milliliters, liters. Okay, so there's my volume. Now I can take 0 0.725 liters, and I can pull out the molarity, okay? 2.5 molar equals 2.5 moles, here we are unpacking it, divided by 1 liter. We could also flip this, but we don't need to, because writing molarity like this is all we need to do to cancel out the units of liters and leave us with moles here. Multiply through here, and we're left with rounded at two significant figures, 1.8 moles. Okay, now we know how much NaOH in moles, but since the question asks for grams, we gotta take this mole measurement and we gotta multiply it 
by a conversion factor that involves the molar mass. So I've already done the math here. There is a sodium, an oxygen, and a hydrogen. So we've got to add the weights of them all together here. And we can express that in 40 grams per mole, or one mole over 40 grams. I will use uh, this version of the molar mass. I know that each mole of sodium hydroxide weighs 40 grams. So if I have 1.8 moles of those, I'll do that times 40 grams. 1.8 times 40 equals 72 grams. And that's, uh, that's how we get that final mass. Now, the molarity problems that you do aren't going to be identical to the ones that I'm doing here, obviously. But if you look at the steps that I use, converting between milliliters and liters, and converting, converting from grams to moles, they're steps that you'll use all the time when you're solving for moles and liters using molarity as a conversion factor. And always, always, always remember that whenever you see a concentration given in molar, you can always expand that and unpack it to turn it into moles over liters, a conversion factor that you can then flip if you need to.